Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat! Oh my God. Woo! Double in. Double two fish trip right there. That's a beautiful Let's do this. That's mutton snapper Let's right there, this. baby. Let's do this. Have you ever heard about the million dollar bait fish? That one fish that swims off the east coast all the way up to New England at a specific time of year and somehow seems unavoidable? That's right, I'm talking about the Bonita. In this episode, I'm gonna go over how, when, and where to target Bonita to help you so that you can catch as much as you can during the summer months so that you can have a nice stockpile of baits such as chunks and strips that will last you throughout the year until the following annual run comes around. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Before we can talk about targeting Benita, we have to know some facts about this fish. First thing is in their appearance. They have a tuna-like shape. The thing that defines them and sets them out from all other tunas is this maze-like pattern that is just behind their dorsal fin. It's almost like a fingerprint. Each fish has its own distinct markings, yet they all kind of look the same. This is the defining mark of the Bonita. They have several different names. Down off Florida, they're known as Bonita or Little Tunny. As you go further up the coast, they like to call them Albies. They're also known as False Albacore. Bonita have gone from being considered a trash fish. They're now considered a prized, pelagic, tough fighting fish. Known for its power and its unrelenting stamina. Bonita are part of the tuna family. They are one of the most prominent bait fish on the East Coast from Florida all the way up to New England. It is the most common tuna in the Atlantic Ocean. Bonita lack a swim bladder, which means they constantly have to be on the move swimming, otherwise they'll sink. This means they have no natural buoyancy regulation. This is the reason they're so powerful. They're always swimming. Bonita eat a lot. They grow fast. And they rarely live past five years old. Most of them won't even see their first birthday. Bonita are a highly migratory species. They're always migrating. They're always on the move north with the stream. They head up north along the east coast when they get to about New England, they will head out west towards the Sargasso Sea. This is where they will spawn. When they get about halfway out to the Atlantic Ocean, they will make a turn to the south, back towards the Caribbean. Once they hit the warm waters of the Caribbean, they turn back to the east, where they come up into the Straits of Florida. At this point, the tribe will split. Some will head into the Gulf of Mexico and others will head up the east coast of Florida up back to New England. The masses will head up the east coast. Bonita prefer shallower, warmer water. They are not a cold water fish. In Florida, in the months of May and June, you get the smaller bullet sized Bonitas starting to show up and then they start to get larger as the bigger ones follow them in the migratory pattern north. Come July and August, we get the big Benitas here in Florida, 15, 20 pounders. Come September, October, the size starts getting smaller as the little bullet Benitas start following the leaders of the pack up the east coast in the standard migratory pattern of the Atlantic Ocean tribe. After late October, November, 
all the Benita to disappear until next year when the run starts to cycle around again. All right, I want to talk about Benita being considered a highly prized bait fish. The smaller ones, known as bullets, these ones are great for live bait hole. You hook them up with a stinger rig, you throw them out. They're great for predators such as sailfish, kingfish, wahoo. They will get engulfed whole or they will be cut in half. Then your predator will swim back around and eat the rest of them. The big predators love little bullet bonita. The larger ones make the all time greatest strip bait. A proven staple bait of trolling, especially when using a planer, the Bonita strip. On top of that, the leftover flesh from the larger ones that you slice off when you're making your strips makes great chunk bait for all sorts of fish. For snapper, tuna, any of the mackerels, dolphin, cobia, tilefish, just to name a few. And don't forget sharks. Sharks love Bonita. All right, now we're gonna talk about how to target Bonita. The easiest way to find Bonita is to pack up your stuff, go to the lower keys and park your boat off any shrimp boat that is active. They'll be there in the hundreds. The next most productive way to find them is to find a pot of bait fish blowing up on the water and them being attacked by skyrocketing tuna like looking fish it's more than likely bonita eating everything in sight problem with both of these methods is they're not really conducive to everyday average joe fishermen so since these options aren't readily available you're gonna have to go with one of the many other tactics that you can do to target bonita more often than not there's chumming and drifting out baits if you're out in between 100 and 200 feet of water chumming drifting out a sardine or something bonita are bound to come around if they're roaming through the area it's not the most effective way to catch bonita but it most definitely works you can sight fish for them if you see them blowing up on the water you grab something like a spro jig pitch it out to them do a fast retrieve and get the hook up this method isn't too effective but it works it's very similar to running and gunning. Problem is with this method is Bonita are sensitive to the pitch change of an engine running up on them and slowing down and you throw out your jig to retrieve it. At that point, you have almost effectively spooked them and they will dive down lower and disperse and there goes your chances of getting the hookup, which is why running and gunning for Bonita doesn't really work all the time. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but it's less effective than other methods. Then there's trolling. Trolling is super effective for catching Bonita. Sometimes it's so effective, you can't seem to avoid them. Blind trolling for Bonita really works really well. When you can't catch anything else and you're just blindly trolling the deep edge of the reef, Bonita are your top catch. Great little reel to fish with, pen 12H. It uh, it's got great action and it's a tough reel for reeling and you know game fish just like this. Two. Get the head out of the water. Get him in the boat. Trolling artificials is the way to go when trolling for Benita. You don't want to waste your fresh bait. You can troll Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammers, Squirt Squids of any color, Spro Jigs, Drone Spoons. You can even troll a planer with a Sea Witch and get the bigger ones down deep. And then there's Jigging, super effective also for catching Bonita. There's high speed vertical jigging always great fun when you get that hookup and that fish doubles your rod over and you're 
the battle is on. Nothing gets the adrenaline more rushing than a high-speed vertical jig hookup on a fat, meaty bonita. A shiny jig is always irresistible. Personally, I have found the most effective method of jigging for bonita to be slow pitch jigging. I believe the pitch and fall, pitch and fall aspect of the slow pitch jig is what really triggers that impulse to feed when it comes to slow pitch jigging and the bonita hookup. There we go, we got the hook up. There we go. Oh, and he's all hooked up. Oh, yeah, Benita on the slow pitch jig. This method of jigging seems to entice the fish more so than high-speed vertical jigging. A key to targeting bonita is speed. The impulse to feed by bonita is always there. However, it is kicked into overdrive by a fast-moving target. That being said, the most effective way that I have found over the years to target bonita is high-speed trolling for them. You're gonna be doing between 12 and 15 knots trolling the deep edge of the reef between 100 and 200 feet targeting only Bonita. There you go, that's what it's like when you get a high speed acceleration hit. Yeah. Bonita can swim upwards of 40 miles an hour and faster. You're not going to outrun Bonita. And they love a fast moving prey fish. I am not claiming to be a pioneer of high speed trolling at all. However, I have done several years worth of high speed trolling for Bonita. It is not only the most effective way to catch them, it is the funnest too. There is nothing like a high speed trolling strike. What you do is you're traveling at between 12 and 15 knots on the deep edge of the reef. Once you find what depth the fish are in, let's say 140 feet, they're going to be there for that day. Zoom in a straight line. There's no need to bob and weave. Stay at 140 until you get your next hookup. Load up until you're done catching Bonita for the day. It's going to happen quick. Once you find them, you're going to get hit after hit after hit after hit. You might not even get back up to speed before you get hit again. I catch more Bonita high speed trolling for them than I do with any other method. Once you find Bonita in a certain depth, that's what depth they're going to be at that day. Like I said, if you find them in 140, they're going to be right in that range, 140, maybe a few feet shallower, maybe a few feet deeper. but. If you find them there, there ain't no reason to go out to 250. There's no reason to head back into 90. They're at that depth for that day. Just remember, they are fish and they're always swimming. So that's what's gonna work that day. That does not mean it's gonna work the next day or the day after. So you've gotta find them on a consistent basis. But once you find them, they're not gonna be moving. They found a temperature and they found the food and that's where it is and you'll be able to catch enough. Once the bonita bite dies, it's time to move on to something else. Now I wanna talk about where you should be looking for bonita if you are targeting them. Bonita are pelagic fish that feed and forage on the bait fish of the reef. 
they are an important part of the reef system. They can generally be found between 50 and 250 feet. They're following the food. Wherever you find bait fish, the bonita are not far behind. When targeting bonita, I prefer to start around 150 feet, looking for the bigger ones in July. In the other months, let's say May and June or September, October, I'll start shallower over the reef between 60 and 90, looking for the smaller bullet bonitas. And of course, if I see them blowing up on top, I'm gonna slow the boat, approach them, grab a spro jig on a spinning reel, toss it out, and reel it in as fast as I can and go for that hookup. All right, now I wanna talk about the best time to fish for them. The best time to do any fishing is always debatable, so I'm gonna tell you what I prefer. I prefer to target Bonita in the morning hours, between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. However, Bonita feed all day. The one thing that I do know is that as night falls, the Bonita bite does tend to die off. Bonita are not night feeders. What they do is they will head down deeper and disperse over the reef to avoid the predators such as sharks and wahoo that are gonna come in and feed on them. The interesting thing about Bonita is that they don't seem to pay too much attention to water flow and the moon phase. Meaning they're always eating and they're very opportunistic. So if the opportunity presents itself they're gonna feed. Unlike other predators, Bonita are less cautious and more easily triggered to feed. Which is why sometimes they seem to be the only thing biting. Now I'm gonna talk about my favorite lures to target Bonita with. Hands down, if I see Bonita on top, I am most definitely throwing a white bucktail spro jig. It always works. White bucktail jig catches everything everything in the ocean eats a white bucktail jig i've said it before if i had one lure and one lure only to choose i'm choosing the white bucktail jig however if we're talking about other methods of fishing such as high speed trolling like i really like to do for bonito my favorite two lures are a billy bait mini turbo slammer in the color pearl blue it's a four and a half inch lure i rig it with double hooks and about six to seven feet of 40 pound monofilament leader. The other lure that I like to high speed troll with is a squirt squid. Now, this one I specialize. I'll buy a 12 inch squirt squid. I'll cut it down to six inches. Usually I like a darker color squirt squid, a purple and a blue, something along those lines. I don't really like the pinks and whites and the brighter colors. The Benita seem to be attracted more to the darker colors. Not quite sure why, but this is something that I've just found over the years, which is why it's one of my favorite. 12 inch squirt squid, plugged with a two ounce weight up in the head, two 80 hooks, and again, about six to seven feet of 40 pound mono leader. Those are my go-to lures when it comes to high speed trolling for Benita. And then there's the slow pitch jigging, which I love to do for Benita too. Highly effective. I found that there's two colors for slow pitch jigs that work. One is silver with glow on it, whether it's little dots or stripes. The other color is red with glow or dots. Oranges and fluorescent greens and blues and rainbow colors and stuff that looks like spectrums and all this flashiness is you giving your money to a manufacturer. You don't have to go far or search deep to find an effective slow pitch jig. You've got the long jigs, which are skinny ones, which work in high current situations. And then you've got the wider ones or the more medium teardrop shaped ones that work in lower current situations or no current situations. Now I'm gonna talk about the gear that I like to use when it comes to targeting Bonita. First is a light to medium spinning rod. So this is a Penn Spin Fisher 5500. It's spooled with 20 pound spoke blue Momoi monofilament. 
It's on a seven foot pen battalion rod. This is what I will hook up a spro jig onto and sight fish for them, or I'll troll the spro jig over the reef and go for them. This rod, don't let it fool you. This thing is a weapon. It will handle the big, bad bonitas. You can also use heavier class spinners. This is a pen spin fisher 8500 on a seven foot star rod from the Paraflex series. Great rod, more meaty, more beef behind it, made for more beastly fish, such as Benita. Gonna be less of a fight and less of a challenge for you using a rod in a reel like this. However, you're more likely to get them to the boat with less of a struggle. And um, you know, if you're not so much as looking for the sport of it and looking to get them in, you'll wanna go with something like this. Then there are light conventional reels. This is the setup that I go high speed trolling for Benita with. This is a Pen 12H. It's spooled with 20 pound pink anti line. It is on a seven foot star rod from the handcrafted series. Now, the special thing about this rod is it has an enormous amount of flex and shock absorbency in it. Your rod is gonna need a lot of shock absorbency when high speed trolling, because it's going to be pulling the lure fast through the water and then it's gonna get hit, which is gonna put more stress on it. So it's gotta have a lot of shock absorbency because remember, when you're saltwater fishing, the fish sets the hook. You don't, especially if you're trolling. I recommend mono, not braid, for high-speed trolling because mono acts like a rubber band. It expands, it stretches out. It stretches almost 30% of its original length when a fish strikes. And then there's slow pitch jigging. I use a conventional reel for slow pitch jigging. This is an accurate boss from the Fury series, 600N, 600 narrow. It's spooled with 900 yards of 30 pound braid. And on top of that, I have a 25 foot top shot of 40 pound fluorocarbon leader. This rod is great for slow pitch jigging because of the shock absorbency factor of it and the ability to pitch and let the lure fall. Pitch and let the lure fall. The rod loads great. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned about targeting the million dollar bait, the Bonita. Until next time, South Florida saltwater fishing going wherever the cool wind takes us.